What's good, people? Thank you as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, first thing first, I just want to apologize uh, because of the lighting. Um, I didn't bring my light with me to South Africa. Um, it's very, very late here. It's coming up to 1 a.m. in the morning, so we're just using normal lights. I just tried to play around with some um, lights and it hasn't worked, so we're just using the normal lights. So apologies. I've just literally finished packing. I go back to London tomorrow and I didn't even expect to do a video this late, but someone sent me um, a message on Twitter saying that Jerome Miller has just been banned. And I was obviously all over it, um, trying to find out who banned him, because um, obviously we know the issue of the New York State Athletic Commission, they can't do anything. So I was very keen and excited just because I'm all over this story as to which one of those sanctioning bodies have banned him and for how long. And I'm not happy. I'm fucking, I'm almost the opposite. I'm furious, if I'm honest with you. Jarrell Miller has received a six month ban or suspension. Let's call it a suspension. That's what it really is by the WBA. So they have removed him from their rankings. He can't fight for the WBA or that organization for six months. That's it. That's it. After six months, happy to fight for the WBA again, can go back on the rankings and move on with his career. Again, others might follow suit and impose something very similar or maybe longer, I don't know. We have to wait to see if the WBO or the IBF or the IBO do anything. But as it stands right now, the WBA have imposed a six month, I'm gonna call it what it is, a suspension. He can't fight for six months for the WBA. He's removed from their rankings. That's that. That's a fucking disgrace. That's um, that's a disgrace, isn't it? It's actually, it's actually embarrassing. I'd, I'd rather them do nothing. I'd rather them do nothing. And um, I need to know what it takes for a fighter to get a two-year ban, right? I need to know. Because if EPO, HGH, and Endurodol gets you six months, what have you got to take to get a year to two years? Answers on a postcard, please. Anyone out there that's a PD expert, please let me know. Human growth hormone, EPO, <laughs> EPO, EPO, Lance Armstrong EPO, and Endurodol has got him a six month ban, sorry, six month suspension by the WBA. And I'm starting to believe, and it's taken me a while to come round, and it shouldn't have really, but I'm starting to believe that, let's be honest, the big wigs, so the promoters, the managers, all the other people at the top, the sanctioning bodies, um, even probably some of the TV execs don't really give a shit. I, they don't really give a shit about trying to eradicate this PED problem from boxing. Us fans scream and shout, right? But when it comes to it, the, the big wigs don't really care because what it does, especially in a situation like Jarrell Miller versus Anthony Joshua, it leaves a lot of people at the top out of pocket. Joshua versus Andy Ruiz, who is the big favorite now, Michael Hunter or Trevor Bryant, right? Those are the three in the running. Um, they're not going to make as much as Joshua versus Gerard Miller would have. And that's all they care about. That's all they care about. The guys at the top don't give a fuck. That's all they care about is the fact that they've lost out on money, right? And Gerard Miller's not even a draw, but his numbers would have been bigger than, I guess, Michael Hunter, Andy Ruiz and Trevor Bryant. And that's basically the bottom line. That's basically the bottom line. Again, look, I've always gone back to this and I'm probably repeating myself now because I've said it so many times. But if an athlete, in terms of an, someone from the athletics background, was to take what Jarrell Miller had taken and Varda or Wada or even USADA was to catch that person, they're probably banned for life. At a minimum, they're getting four years. Minimum four years. Minimum, right? Um, I've read about rugby players that have taken Kumbutra and have, have got four years. Kumbutra and have got four years. And we're talking about Jarrell Miller potentially being banned by the WBA for six months. Considering that the New York State Athletic Commission can't ban him, I would have expected the sanctioning bodies to really impose something crazy, right? Im impose something crazy. I don't know if there's any sort of legislation which states they can't go more than this, but as far as I know, there isn't. Go crazy on him. Set an example. Really set an example to show, you know what? We are trying to eradicate this sport of drugs. Right now, if I'm a boxer, if I'm a boxer, a top level boxer, and six months is all I'm gonna get for cheating, then what stops me? Most fighters fight three times a year, some two times a year. So six months is literally saying, you're gonna miss a fight, maybe even none, maybe even none. I don't know why I don't do, maybe even none. That's what they're doing with Jerome Miller right now. Um, wow, wow, that, that, that's, that's shocking. <laughs> that's shocking. Um, 
Again, no, no one cares. No one cares. I was watching an interview just now, very good interview as well, by the way, with Eddie Hearn, Steve Kim, and Mario Lopez. And Eddie Hearn, you could see, was still very, very upset um, about the situation. But Steve Kim asked him, um, and this was a chance for Eddie Hearn to lay down a marker, I thought, but Steve Kim asked him, will you ever work with Jerome Miller again? Um, he said, I, I can't really answer that question right now. I was like, I was like, well, why can't you answer it? Just say no. You are the biggest promoter in the world right now. Say no. Couldn't say it. Couldn't say it because he knows that you probably will work with him again. He probably will because, I mean, look, all drug cheats are accepted back into boxing. No one seems to give a fuck. Tyson Fury has been openly accepted. No one even mentions the fact that he's a cheater. No one mentions it. Canelo, openly accepted. We've got a fight coming up in four days or five days against Danny Jacobs. No one's even talking about the fact that this guy tested positive twice, twice for a banned substance. Billy Joe Saunders, I mean, is, is it even mentioned anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I blame us as well. Us fans are a part to blame in this as well. We seem to uh, let fighters off the hook a lot. Let fighters off the fucking hook a lot. I don't know if it's because they're our favourite fighters or just because we've accepted that there is cheating in boxing. But again, the names I just mentioned, Tyson Fury doesn't even get a mention that this guy failed a drugs test. Billy Joe Saunders doesn't get a mention. Canelo doesn't get a mention. We can go on and on on fighters that have popped... Nothing seems to have happened. Five, six months have passed and we welcome them back with open arms. Uh, that's what's going to happen with Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller, who's taken, again, remind you, EPO, HGH and Endurador is going to be welcomed back with open arms, I say, in about... Hmm, let's have a guess here. Six to eight months. Six to eight months. I think he'll try and get a license to fight in California or Nevada and he'll get it and he'll apologize and do all this and do all that and openly go to all year round drug testing and all of this will be forgotten. Fucking hell. I, I do love this sport, but I can't lie to you. I fucking hate it to the core sometimes. And this is why. What do you guys think? Let me know. Peace.